Hello and welcome to another Stamp with Amy K YouTube Live. And today I'm going to show you how I made a card with the Stampin' Up Painted Lavender Stamp Set Bundle, which is one of the um, newer ones from the current January to April 2024 mini catalog. So this is the card we're making today. And sorry, I'm wiggling my... Um, uh, glass mat around here a little bit so hopefully I can get it a little more centered and straight so hey Danette thanks for hopping on and Quinn as well so this is a card we're going to be making today it's actually pretty uh, quick and easy and um, it just uses the really pretty uh, perennial lavender designer series paper which is on the background here and the beautiful painted lavender images and then I grabbed a sentiment from the notes of nature stamp set so quick and easy a uh, little bit of layering and um, I just love the colors in this paper so much and they all all the pieces coordinate so nicely together so you you can really kind of mix and match it however you want to use it so um hey debbie and judy and carol thanks for joining so this is the painted lavender stamp set and it is photopolymer so it's one of those that is easy to stamp with and easy to see through see where you're stamping at um, there are some two-step stamping images on here if you haven't played with this set yet these two which make like a longer lavender stem you can put this underneath it and then these two they're designed to stamp one on top of the other i got some questions on a card that i made a couple weeks ago with this set and these are designed they stamp one on top of the other so you get kind of a little variation in color with it and depending on which colors you use you can get a lot of variation in color um, but i had just used highland heather and stamped one on top of the other and you get a really cool look and then this little image here which has got like little i don't know they almost look like tiny little butterflies to me but they're actually little lavender blooms that you can stamp over this and we, i actually use this on the inside of the card so i can show you what that looks like when it gets all you know when you use it and when you um stamp it together so um i see patricia and debbie and pam and karen and Jean and jill stephanie nancy everybody thanks for hopping in so these are the painted lavender dies and the dies that are open are the ones that actually will cut out the stamped images here so we have this larger one that cuts out this kind of bunch of lavender this one will cut out this little bunch of flowers then there's one that cuts out the butterflies this is actually the same die and it cuts out this little grouping of flowers here. There's one that cuts out the stems, that stem, and then this is the taller piece of lavender as well. And then there's some accessory dies. Um, so this one just cuts out a little branch as well as this one. And this one cuts out some lavender stems. So uh, hey, Nancy and Sally and Susan and Kathy, thanks for hopping on. All right, so this is the, the uh, stamp and die set. It's bundled together. It's also part of a full suite, and that's where the designer series paper and the little gems came from that I used on my card. But you can just buy the uh, bundle together and save 10%. Um, if you buy the full suite, you used to get the bundle pricing on the two stamps and uh, die sets that that coordinate in the and are bundled together. But there really isn't any additional um, savings purchasing the whole suite. So if for some reason you don't want to buy it all at once, just get the bundle or the bundles and then uh, buy the other items separately. So, hey, Stephanie, thanks. Uh, it, it is such a pretty, pretty set. So, all right, set that aside and that aside. And then the notes of nature is where I got my sentiment from. And I just used the just a little note to say hello uh, stamp from that set. And again, this is another one that's in the current, uh, or the, yeah, the current uh, mini catalog and got lots of pretty images in it. And there's a die set that coordinates with it as well, but I didn't use it on my card. And then the final thing that I used on my card is I did use the Everyday Details dies and I used the rectangle. So this one, I cut out the rectangle that's underneath my floral image here. And then this little one, I used to cut out the sentiment. So this is a great, it's bundled with a um, stamp set that's got some, there's a little teacup and there's a, um, a little thing of flowers. I'm trying to remember what else is in it, but it's a cute little stamp set. But if you don't love the stamp set, this is a great standalone die set itself. So um, I highly recommend you get this one because it cuts out lots and lots of images. So uh, hey, Drew and Karen and Karen. So glad y'all are joining. All right, scoot that aside and talk quickly. Celebration's going on now, so don't forget we have this awesome joining promotion going on. Um, you can get the glass mat when you join as a new demonstrator. So you'd pay $99 for your starter kit, get the glass mat for free, the glass mat, mat studio, which has got a little cleaning cloth and a little silicone mat that go with it. Um, it's a $60 value and you can get it for free with your starter kit when you purchase that for $99. 
And on top of that, you get to pick $125 worth of whatever Stampin' Up! merchandise you might like to get. So that is one of the joining options going on right now. And then there is another joining option. If you don't love the glass mat, don't need the glass mat, you can also join and get to pick an additional $30 in free product um, from the Stampin' Up! catalog, anything that you want. So the starter kit is $99, and you get to pick $155 worth of Stampin' Up! merchandise in your starter kit. Starter kits always ship for free. You're going to get some catalogs. And yeah, then you'll be a demonstrator and you can get the 20% uh, discount minimum on your orders. Uh, no requirement to sell anything, no requirement to buy anything else. But um, yeah, we'd love to have you come join us. We're a very relaxed, fun group of stampers and we just love stamping up. So, uh, all right. Let us, and I see uh, Berlinda's here, and yes, and Susan, I, I think I already said hello to Karen. Thanks, everybody, for joining. So online exclusives, just wanted to remind you about those. Um, when you're out placing your orders, make sure you're taking a peek at the online exclusives. There are some really good things that are available right now. Uh, for instance, instance, the Meandering Meadows suite that you can see on here is available. Um, the little uh, butterflies and dragonflies, not butterflies, birds and dragonflies, <laughs> that are part of that suite are actually on back order right now, but they're due back in stock in early February. So hopefully the wait won't be too much longer on those. And then there are a couple of other little sweet things out there or quite a few other sweet little things out there. So go take a look anytime you're ordering. And then we've got some new online exclusives that pre-order will be starting on the 1st of February for demonstrators. And these can be added to a starter kit. So um, just throwing that out there in case you were interested in getting your hands on these a little bit early. This is only a small sampling of what will be available to order. Um, just a few of the items. So there are flowering zinnias, designer series paper, and then there is a Xenia 3D embossing folder. It looks like some pretty little shiny sequins, a stamp set and dies. And then there's the Encircled in Nature stamp set bundle. Um, so yeah, again, this is just a small sampling. There will be a lot of other things available as well. But these are some of the items that are going to be available to pre-order starting on February 1st or to order as a customer starting on March 5th. So this set, the new set of... Um, online exclusives will be available for everybody to order March 5th. Let me know if you have questions about that. I will post a link to that flyer in my blog post tomorrow where I show you this card. So you'll be able to take a closer look at it and see all the pretty new things. So, okay, let's get going on the card. And I apologize, my younger daughter um, brought home, she's homesick, brought home a bit of a runny nose and I seem to have gotten kind of hopefully a more mild version of what she had. So I apologize if I'm, my nose is dripping during this, but I have tissues handy and a drink. So hopefully I won't need either of those, but all right. So my card base, my original one was a four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half inches across the top. So it's a top fold card, but like I usually say, I usually try to show if I've got a um, card base that I can cut the regular card way. Um, I usually try to show you that um, you can also do almost all the cards that I create with the regular book fold card. So if you like this card base better than the one that I have done, you can certainly use the five and a half by eight and a half scored at four and a quarter piece of card stock for your card. Um, this is crumb cake that we're starting with and I see a couple questions have come in. Um, online exclusives, yep, they're very pretty. As do you know if the glass mat will be available on February 1st? It'll be available for new people who join on February 1st. Uh, as far as if you're a current demonstrator, I don't know. Stampin' Up! has not given us any indication on when those would be available to purchase later on down the road. So, all right, I am taking a little bit of multi-purpose liquid glue and adhering it to the card front and adhering it, applying it to the card front. <laughs> and then I've got a piece of the perennial lavender designer series paper that should be cut to about four and a quarter by five and a half. So if I've cut it correctly, it should cover the entire card front. And hopefully I did. So there we go, stick that down. All right. And then I have got another piece of the Perennial Lavender Designer Series paper. This one is cut to about an inch and a half wide by about five and a half inches tall. And then I've got a piece of Highland Heather cardstock and this is cut to about one and five eighths by about five and a half. And I'm gonna layer those one on top of the other with some Stampin' Seal. Oh, thanks, Jill. Like I said, is um, she's doing better. She kind of had a rough weekend and was uh, really sort of miserable all weekend. But today, she's definitely feel like it's turned a corner, and um, I think we're 
going to be okay to go to school tomorrow. <laughs> so I'm ready for her to go back anyway. Uh, so we'll see. Hopefully she'll be still feeling good uh, tomorrow morning and when we get up and head out the door. So, all right. Uh, I've got that adhered together with a little bit of stamp and seal. And then I'm going to apply a little bit of the stamp and seal to the back of the Highland Heather cardstock. And we're going to just stick it on the card front. And there's no specific placement on it. I just kind of slid it over to the one side. And the nice thing about the gingham on the front is that it helps me to line it up, hopefully straight, uh, top and bottom. And just a little, little peek of the gingham on the side and quite a bit on this side. All right. Next thing that I did, and I went ahead and pre-cut this so you didn't have to sit me and watch me poke the little holes out of here. You'll definitely want the die brush if you are uh, the die brush end for the um, take your pick tool. If you get this die set, just because the little holes, you do kind of have to take your die brush and run it over the top. And uh, yeah, the little little dots will go flying everywhere. But you know, that's part of the fun of card making is to see how many of them you'll find on the dog in, you know, two days from now. <laughs> <laughs> whatever so all right so this is the largest oh, let me grab the die set again the largest rectangle uh, from the everyday details dies and when it cuts it actually cuts out what I have done this is like the inside of the frame so I used it to cut this piece but it also will cut the center out so if I wanted to create a frame on my card I can place this on the card front run it through the die cutting machine and then it will cut the, the center out of it so then you're just left with the frame so if that's the look you're going for there are a couple different options with this die set. All right, and I'm going to grab some Stampin' Dimensionals, and we're going to stick this on the card front with some dimensionals. And I do chop my Stampin' Dimensionals in half, and so that's why they're a little smaller than probably the ones that you normally would use. Um, I like the little the smaller ones because they stick just as well as the bigger ones do, and I feel like they fit better on the back of things. I know we have the mini ones, but the minis just are not the right size, I think. <laughs> I like them to be a little bit narrow and a little bit longer than the minis are, so that is why I tend to use these rather than the minis, but if you like the minis, you can certainly go ahead and use those. All right, again, just trying to use the gingham to help me line up where I'm going to um, have my little panel on the card front. And again, just, you know, it's not perfectly centered. I wanted it a little bit to the left, again, because it's hard to line things up perfectly straight. So I figure if I intentionally put them off to the one side, then nobody knows whether I got it straight or not. <laughs> so, hey, Carol, no worries at all. Thanks for hopping in. And then also ahead of time, I pre-cut from Lost Lagoon cardstock. These are some of the little sprigs from the um, Painted Lavender dies. So it is this die cut, and I just ran it through the die cutting machine three times with Lost Lagoon cardstock. And I'm going to grab some little glue dots, and we're going to stick those on the card front here. And I'm just going to put them so that they're kind of down a little bit lower, but not way down at the bottom. I'll show you why I don't want them way down at the bottom in just a second here. So I'm going to take this and stick it off to the one side. And then take another one. Stick it together here. And then sort of take it and stick it off to the other side. And then one more that we're going to just stick sort of in the center of the little grouping here. And I want that to be up just a little bit higher. So, all right. So you can see these are kind of lumped together down here at the bottom. And my sentiment probably will cover it, but in, if for some reason it doesn't, I went ahead and snipped these off just because I knew that the the branch, the, the branch, the stems may or may not cover um, the, the stamped ones that I'm doing may or may not cover. So I just went ahead and snipped these off just to be sure sure that i wasn't gonna have any weird looking stems hanging off the bottom so it looks a little yucky right now but i promise everybody it'll be covered and nobody but you and i will know that i chopped these those little pieces off so all right next up we're gonna do a little stamping Take this stuff out of the way and i've got the stem image from the painted lavender stamp set in shaded spruce ink and we're just gonna ink that up well with shaded spruce ink and we're gonna stamp it twice on basic white cardstock. There we go. Okay, looks like I've got two pretty good images, so I will close that up. And then the next thing I've got is, this is the kind of grouping of the little lavender blooms. So I've got Highland Heather ink. 
I love these colors together too, Daryl. There, it's I don't know what it is about the crumb cake and the purples, and I don't know. It's it's just a good set, and it's a really great pack of paper. So, all right, got the Highland Heather blooms that we're stamping here on basic white cardstock. There we go, and then I'm gonna use my chamois and clean this off because we're gonna stamp them again in gorgeous grape ink. Although it probably would not have mattered too much if I had just went ahead and inked it up again because they're um, the Highland Heather is definitely lighter than the Gorgeous Grape. You wouldn't want to do it the other way around. You don't want to ink something in Gorgeous Grape and then go to Highland Heather later um, because, yeah, you could potentially end up with something that's not quite as uh, um, what you were wanting on your ink pad. <laughs> so there we go. All right. I'm going to close that up. And... Where am I? Oh, there are my dies. And then I'm going to grab my die set, and I'm going to have to run this through the die cutting machine twice because I've got to cut both pieces out. So these are the dies that coordinate. One quick thing to notice on this die set is the first time I cut it out, I was not paying very close attention, and I thought I had it all lined up perfectly, only I didn't. Um, when you use this die set, hopefully you can see it in the camera. So this is not lined up correctly. Hopefully you can see there's a little peak. You'll be able to see the color through the die. There we go. So line up the top and then make sure you're lined up at the bottom. Make sure you can see the little peak of color through those little tiny dots on there. And then you know that you're lined up correctly in order to do the die cutting. So that's my one little tip with this set is just keep an eye on those little dots and make sure you can see the color through them and make sure your top is lined up and then you're good to go. So I'll be back in one second. Let me do the die cutting here. One set. Let me run through the other one. And oh, here's the other set of die cuts. So there we go. And I'm gonna bring my card back in here and we're just gonna stick these pieces to the card front with some glue dot, if I can find them back again. <laughs> stick this to the card front with some glue dots. So I'm gonna put my darker, the gorgeous grape on the bottom. Putting, I don't know, two or three glue dots on the back of it. And then just layering it over the top of my, the die cut sprigs that I've got on here. All right. And I'm not smashing it down until I get everything kind of placed where I want it to be and make sure that everything is in the place I want it to be before I smoosh it down permanently. So I'm just kind of tacking them down for now. And then I'm gonna take my Highland Heather um, little uh, blooms and we're gonna stick that over the top of the gorgeous grape. And then I've got my little stems. There are two sets of those and I probably should have put the stems on the gorgeous grape one before I stuck the Highland Heather over the top, but I think I can tuck it up here underneath it well enough. Yep, yeah, there we go. So there we go. Tucking that one underneath and then putting the other over the top of that one. So hey Roxanne, thanks for joining today. And there we go. Just going to take that one and sort of layer it over the top like that. And I think Looks like everything is kind of in the place that I want it to be. So I'm going to smoosh these down, smash these, and stick them to the um, little greenery die cuts that I've got in the back. And then I'm also going to take a couple of extra glue dots and kind of bend this flap forward a little bit and tuck a few more glue dots behind the scenes here to make sure that this is secured well to the card front so that, you know, nothing is flopping around or, you know, things don't shift when it, I put it in an envelope and have it show up at somebody's house all crazy looking. So, all right, there we go. Got those all smushed down and we should be good to go. So, the lavenders are really pretty. It's such a great stamp set. So, all right, 
Next up, I've got a little piece of Highland Heather, just a scrap of Highland Heather cardstock. And I've got my sentiment from the Notes of Nature stamp set in Lost Lagoon ink. So uh, why do you use glue dots instead of tape runner? Uh, for that, for die cuts, I just find that glue dots work better um, because I can place them specifically where I want them to be. And I don't know. I mean, the tape runner, sometimes it works well to stick things down. Usually I like it to be a little bit flatter, but sticking on, I mean, you can use it if you prefer that, but to me, glue dots, I think, hold it a little bit better and give me a little more flexibility as far as where I put them. So, but again, that's just my personal preference. So if you like the tape runner and it works for you, you can certainly use it. So, Or liquid glue, and y'all know how I feel about liquid glue. <laughs> so, I don't love it, but I know some of you do, so feel free to use it. I have a lot of people on my team that love it as well, and they harass me all the time, but I'm like, I glue my fingers together into my project every time I use it. <laughs> so, um, so I've got the Everyday Details dies, and I've got the smallest one of the little rectangle dies, and I'm going to cut out my sentiment with that. So really like glue dots there. I see that's, that's part of it too when I layer on something like this. Yeah, I agree, Susan, that... I forgot about the dimension thing too, but yeah, that's a, another good point. So. All right. Okay, let me pop that out of the die. And then I'm gonna take some Stampin' Dimensionals. Actually, you know what I almost forgot? I forgot about my linen thread bow. <laughs> I'm glad that I saw that sitting there. So got a little linen thread and we're just gonna tie a bow. So I do my little rabbit ear bows um, when I tie them, particularly from linen thread or baker's twine or anything like that. Just make the little double loop look like rabbit ears, cross them one over the other and then tie the knot. Um, that gives me, again, just a little flexibility on being able to pull the, the bow as big or as small as I want it to be. And, you know, I can kind of, it gives me a little more flexibility with being able to just move things around until I'm ready to stick it to the card front. All right, so I need another glue dot here. And doop, doop, there it is. Just going to take that and stick it right in here next to my, the greenery, because again, this is all going to be covered, so nobody's going to see the yuckiness of it. So, <laughs> so yeah, they won't be able to tell that there's a glue dot jam back in there. All right. Then I'm gonna grab some of my Stampin' Dimensionals and stick down my sentiment. And I'm actually going to stick them to the card front rather than the back of my sentiment because when I put this down over the top, I wanna to make sure that I've got the dimensionals in a place that are gonna hold my sentiment on, but not on, accidentally land on top of this already kind of a lump of papers that I've got in here. So I want it to be about as flat as it can be. Um, as far as these papers can be. And I wanna to try to avoid having something that puts a big bump under my sentiment. So um, I know I had people ask me about Stampin' Dimensionals and how I cut them, and this is how I do it. I just go right down the middle of the row, chop it from side to side, and that's how I cut my dimensionals in half. And like I said, I like them that way. I like the, the size of them and uh, the shape of them a little bit better than the minis. So that's why I use it. And if it makes you cringe to see me do that, then use a whole one or use the minis. Either way is good. <laughs> All right. So I've got my sentiment here and I'm just going to layer it over the top of, whoop, I want to make sure that I've got the uh, yucky looking stems covered up there, which I almost didn't because I was not paying attention. So then we're going to smoosh that down and make sure we've got it stuck to the card front with the dimensionals. And then the final piece of the card front is a couple of the purple fine shimmer gems. These are, I think it's Berry Burst, Gorgeous Grape, and Highland Heather. I think that one's Berry Burst. The other two, I know this is Gorgeous Grape and Highland Heather because I've used a ton of those, um, but I can't remember the other color. So whoop, there we go. Got my larger one. We're just gonna stick that one here. And then one of the smaller ones, we're gonna take that one and stick it kind of right next to it and just adds a little touch of sparkle to the card. And that's really it for the card front. Um, on the inside of the card, I told you I was gonna show you how this stamp set work, or how this stamped image works, I should say. So I've got, I probably can't see it as well in here. Let me grab my stamp set case and I'll show you what the image looks like. So this little row of, of greenery or whatever you wanna call it, and this are actually designed to work together and you can stamp one on top of the other if you like the look of that. Now, again, you don't have to, but I liked the look of it, so I went with it. All right, got some shaded spruce ink 
and I'm gonna ink up my little row of stems. And I'm gonna line it up down here at the bottom, stamp it once. And ink it a second time and kind of overlap them a little bit. Stamp it twice. And then one more time here. Stamp it a third time. There we go. And then I'm going to grab my chamois and clean up the mess of green ink that I've got here on the glass mat before I move on. Speaking of, did you see it was there a second ago and I dumped it off. I don't know for sure where it went. Um, there was one of the little crumb cake dots <laughs> from my die cut somehow landed and was floating in the middle of this piece of paper. So, all right, then I've got, uh, whoops, that's not the color I wanted. I wanted Highland Heather. Although gorgeous grape would work too. Got a little Highland Heather ink and this is that little grouping of the kind of the three, three little lines of blooms, I guess is what we'll call them. So I'm just gonna take that and just stamp it randomly over the other image that I've got on the paper already. Now there's probably a way that you can line these up and you know stamp them perfectly together. I really didn't worry too much about it. I just went and stamped them sort of over the top so that there was little peaks of the Highland Heather in there along with the shaded spruce. So, and just stamped it right across and I'm not entirely sure, I think, I think this is right side up, but I don't even know if there's an upside right, right side up, upside down, <laughs> so there you go. And that's how they work together. So it's a really, it's kind of a cool little border, I think. And uh, yeah, so that's it. <laughs> They're designed to work together and they do work nicely. So, all right, gonna take a little stamp and seal and we're gonna adhere that to the inside of the card base. And then we're gonna be all done for today. All right, whoop, get on there. All right, there we go, stick that together. Then grab my bone folder and do a quick crease over the score line here, and that is it. So, card I made ahead of time with the top fold. This is the card with the side fold, and like I said, you can use either card base, whichever one's your favorite. Um, but yeah, hopefully you like it, and definitely this suite of products I love. It's one of my favorite things in the catalog. I'm so glad the dies are back. If you didn't know that, in the U.S. they were sold out for a little while, uh, but they're back. So yay for that. So I've got uh, a couple of little cards here for you. Um, hopefully you like them. All the details will be posted on my blog for these tomorrow, um, along with a printable PDF tutorial, so you can come out and print that out if you want to know all the card stock cuts and all that stuff. It'll all be there. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate you being here. I'll plan to be live. Hopefully Hopefully I won't be sniffly <laughs> on Friday around 2 o'clock Eastern time. And then back here again around 2 o'clock Eastern time next week, Tuesday. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll chat with you.